there and welcome to another Color It In video. Today I'm going to show you how to color this whimsical pumpkin scene. So if you'd like to do this project with me, you can print out the pumpkins page from my e-coloring book number three, which will be linked down below. And I recommend that you print this on smooth cardstock. And the main product that I used for this project was the 36 set of Noyo Gel Crayons by Doodle Hog. So this and all the other supplies I used will also be linked down below. And I hope today is the day that I earn your subscription, so please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I decided to add hills for my background, so I planned out the general placement and drew them in with a number two pencil. I placed them towards the top and bottom of the large pumpkin. And oops, I forgot to mask off the frame first, so we'll do that now. So I started by coloring the bottom of the sky with light purple and then the whole remainder of that section with dark purple because I'll use some of it as an undercoat for the top since I'll go in with black at the top and I didn't want the black to look too harsh and overpowering. I tried not to press too hard with the black. And now let's blend from light to dark. Here I didn't want to lose too much of my light purple, so I made sure to clean off my fingers before reworking that area. And repeat the same pattern on the other side. And this is sped up to save video time, but you take your time and just pause whenever you need to in order to catch up. Now with the yellowish brown, I colored the top of the hill. Then with the medium brown, I colored the bottom of that first hill and over some of that yellow brown and then blended from light to dark. And just like the purple, that dark brown is very powerful, so make sure to use a clean finger anytime you need to rework the transition area. Then repeat the same thing for the rest of the hills.
Now we'll work on the pumpkins. So the pattern for each section of the pumpkins will be light yellow at the tops and outer edges, light orange in the middle, and dark orange at the bottom. And then blend from light to dark before moving on to the next section. The dark orange will also go behind the edges of that front section to emphasize it against the other ones. Here I was afraid the colors would dry out before blending the whole thing at that front section because it's so large. So I worked on the left and right sides separately. And I used a Q-tip in areas where I was afraid my fingers would mess up the blending. I've found it's easiest to lay it parallel to the paper so it doesn't scratch out the color. And now to more clearly define the front section, I added some medium brown up against its sides. It just helps it look more three-dimensional. It brings that section forward and pushes the others back in space a bit.
For the stems, at the bottom I used that dark foresty green color. It's the one that is more dull than the other greens. And then a medium green for the top half and the light green for those little ovals at the top. So I'll slow this part down so you can see how I drew it. So using a number two pencil, I lightly drew in some loopy tendrils. And if you can't quite see it on camera, you'll see it once I go in with the forest green color. But I drew it lightly in case I messed up, I could just color over it. Okay, so this is that dark forest green. Make sure your color has no crumbs on it. And I pressed hard to avoid as much graininess as possible. And I also made these tendrils kind of fat and the loops fairly large because I'll go in later with some highlights. And I did get some crumbs, so I smoothed them out with a clean Q-tip. Now I made a mess of the highlights on the tendrils because I couldn't find my proper brush. They ended up turning out looking okay, but I had to do a lot of fighting with the brush and a lot of cleaning up. And then of course, after I finished filming, I found my brush. It was right in front of my face, but I just didn't see it. So for now, I'm gonna skip the original footage of the highlights and later on I'll do close-ups and show you how to do them without all of that unnecessary struggle. So moving on, we're gonna work on the grass. We'll use some dark green acrylic paint, but as you'll see, it's too translucent against the gel crayons. So what I did was first underlay the grass with the forest green gel crayon. And the way I laid in the grass blades was by finding the middle of the picture, then everything to the right is curving to the left, and everything to the left is curving to the right, kind of like they're hugging the pumpkins. So make swooping motions and apply more pressure at the bottom, then quickly release your pressure as you move up to get a fine tip. Now, you'll notice that the lines look kind of grainy, but that's where the paint comes in. So brush in your strokes over the existing blades. This will loosen up the color for a smoother looking application. I'm using a Filbert brush number six. I dipped it in the paint, then wiped the gloppiness off on the edges of the cup. And I applied the paint just the way I did with the gel crayons. Then once I went over the main grass, I filled in some more in between the blades. Now clean off your brush and we'll add some yellow highlights, allowing the yellow to mix in with the green. I felt like they now look too bright, so I added another layer of green. Now we'll add some stars with white acrylic paint uh, and a paper clip. 
So open up the paper clip, dip it in the paint, and add the stars all over the sky. Just press straight down and don't scrape. And the way I got some smaller stars was just by applying a lighter pressure. And I meant to be done here, but I just couldn't resist adding more detail. I felt like the back hill looked a bit empty, so I filled in some grass just above the big hill. And then I added some leaves on the tendrils first with that base coat with the forest green. Then a coat of green paint. And I added a light tone on the top of each leaf with the yellow. Then I mixed some white into the yellow and added a few veins. And this Filbert number no. 6 brush really made it easy to get those thin lines. Just make sure that you only have a thin layer of paint on your bristles. Okay, now here's the fun reveal, but hold on because I'm about to show you how to add the highlights to the tendrils, as promised. So this is a round brush number two. That pointy tip will help with getting into those skinny areas of the tendrils. So dip it in the yellow paint and swipe off the gloppiness on the edges of the cup. And I'll bring you closer up so you can see it better. So the trick is to apply light pressure to get a thin line and reload the paint as soon as you run out. That might sound like common sense, but trust me, it's tempting to keep working on the same area, just hoping that more paint will magically appear on your brush. So don't be shy about reloading. And as for the placement of the highlights, 
think of whatever is facing up and to the right, except there were a couple of spots where I added some light highlights to the left because it looked too empty and I needed to define the loop more. Then to soften the hard edges of the yellow, dip a clean brush in the water once, then lightly dab it on a napkin, and then lightly brush between the yellow and the green. And there we go! Look how whimsical and dramatic this turned out. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. If so, I hope you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for another one. Okay, see you next time. Bye!